Salem. First half, Virginia down three. Adam Hall creating his own space. Hall not scared of heights. He had seven points. Virginia cuts the Wake lead to one, but just shot 41% in the game. On the fast break, boy, fast breaks the key for Wake. Craig Dawson to Antoine Scott, a statement slam. Wake outscored Virginia 16 to two in fast break points. Deeks up by 10 at the half. Broderick Hicks dazzles us at the baseline. Wake by 22, Hicks with 10. Virginia would keep battling down 13. Donald Hand can't find it. Travis Watson, nine points, nine boards. Cavs within 11, but Wake very deep. Wake at 6'9", 245 pounder. Darius Sungaila. Sungaila, who helped Lithuania win a bronze at Sydney, a career high 27 points. He was 11 of 12 from the field. He also has scored 49 points now in his last two games against Virginia. The Deeks win streak now at 17 straight. They hold Cavaliers leading scorer Roger Mason to a season low five points. After the talk was about Wake's Darius Sungaila, said losing coach Pete Gillen, he's a killer. He's a mangler. League night in the Big East as well. Notre Dame at Syracuse. Damon Brown. Damon Brown. Nice floater. Brown 26 points, 13 rips. Orange up 10 at the half, 35-25. Second half. Steers up nine on the break. Alan Griffin. Whoops. Swatted by Troy Murphy. Let's go the other way. David Graves, Alley, Ryan Humphreys there to, oop, he had 18 points, 11 boards, Irish down seven, they're making a run. Here's a rebound opportunity, and Humphrey is there to take advantage. Irish down one after that flush. Orangeman up 68-64, and it's Griffin with six of 19. That's from deep, he got three. Griffin, 20, Syracuse wins at 79-70. Allen Griffin, 11 of his 20 in the final, three minutes, 42 seconds. The Second half. Heels were down 12 at the half, but we're tied. Chris Lang, so money, he doesn't even know it. Two of his 18 gives the Heels the two-point lead. UNC up six. Alvin Jones. Jones! But Tech Shutch is 23% in the second half. Later in the second half, Julius Peppers. He's been lifting. Tar Heels up by 10. And then late second half, Joseph Forte. Nice pass to Max Owens. But it was Forte with 20 points to help the Heels win. Eight of those 20 coming on just two possessions early in that second half. Joe Forte has just one rule. He will not lose. The Yellow Jackets sting themselves down the stretch. Just one basket during a seven and a half minute span. 17th ranked Maryland open an ACC play on the road at Clemson. Second half, Maryland up 71-70. Will Solomon points 27, 28, 29 on the evening. Puts his team up two moments later. Maryland back up one. Terrence Moore as part of an 8-0 run. Maryland goes up 77-73. Later, Solomon, another three, seven of 11, finished with 32 points. Clemson within one. Terrence Morris answering back. This time, you only get two. But those are impressive, too. Morris, 26 points, and Maryland wins it 104 to 92. The Terps add to three streaks. Fourth straight over 100. Sixth straight win over the Tigers. Nice seat and all seat and all. Up three in the first half. Eddie Griffin with the block. Andre Barrett is the big man, got the block. He ran the floor. He'll get the hoop as well. Griffin, 16 points, 16 rebounds, six blocks. He's just a pup. Second half, the Hall of Ten. Griffin backdoor to Marcus Toniel. And that's kind of fancy. Pirates win their fourth straight, 87-80, 10 points for Tony L. Let's transition to 20th-ranked Georgetown visiting West Virginia. Second half, all Georgetown. Anthony Perry with a steal. Head to Gerald Riley, who gives it back to Perry. Oh, it's wonderful when the kids share. Georgetown wins at 90-66. They're 12-0. Perry led the way with 15 points. Only three teams in 97 years have ever won four straight Big Ten titles. Top-ranked Michigan State is trying to become the fourth. But Illinois could create a challenge, considering... The Spartans and the highly touted Wisconsin are the only two conference teams the Illini don't have to play on the road. To the Breslin, Penn State in town for MSU. Joe Crispin jumping off the deep end. More Penn State. Titus Ivory. From there, three of his 22 points. Ivory again. Four of nine from three-point range. Joe Crispin puts Penn State up four. Charlie Bell watching the ball head out of bounds. Great hustle by Joe Crispin to track it down and then nail the three. I wouldn't even want to be the fly on the wall in Michigan State's halftime locker room. <laughs> yeah, Tommy's his crew down 11 at the half. Spartans come out focused. Zach Randolph, two of his 10. Still in the second half, down one. Andre Hudson. Hudson, so talented. He's a thief, and he can finish. 20 points. Michigan State up by one. You were concerned? Spartans pulling away. Speaking of pulling away, Charlie Bell, one of his six steals. Bell, a game-high 26 points. He had eight assists. 
Were you worried? 98-73. The Spartans rallied for 25-point victory, outscoring Penn State 61-25 to in that second half. Oh, here, I'll give you a secret. You could be that fly on the wall. Said Tom Izzo, at least after the game, it was an incredible game. They killed us in the first half, and we reciprocated in the second. We're not quite as good as we think we are, but they did extend the nation's longest win streak to 23 games. Oh, what about Illinois? destroyed Minnesota 80 to 64 eight of Marcus Griffin's 27 points coming early in that second half when Illinois went on a 23 to 8 run Griffin also had seven boards two blocks and one assist John league night in the Big East UConn Boston College second half UConn down seven having trouble scoring Johnny Selvey misses from inside Edmund Saunders in close can't get it to go as well UConn went seven minutes 35 seconds without a field goal BC putting it away Xavier Singletary open hitting he had 23 points. Then Ryan Sidney. He's stealing one of 22 Connecticut turnovers ahead to Singletary for the slam. BC wins at 85-68. Troy Bell had 27. You want to talk about reciprocating. But their number two ranking, bling it, bright, for one reason. A December 21st beatdown of Duke. Basically, Stanford's legit. Pac-10 against Arizona State. Jaron Collins averaging 13.7 boards. Jason averaging nine boards. You know, I can't tell him apart either. I do know that Jason is off the charts. 15 points. And then Jaron getting his fade on down low. Collins brothers together. 31 points, 13 boards combined. Later in the first, Stanford up 12. Casey Jacobson, sweet backdoor cut. Kids are tight. Carter shot 55.8% for the game. Jaron Collins. Put on some old Motown, had a black party. Tony Jovacchini to Jacobson. Jacobson blew stuff up. 17 in the first half, 23 for the game. Stanford wins it, 94-77. Cardinal coach Mike Montgomery picks up his 300th win as Stanford coach. 15 years there, he's going 300 and 143. Montgomery 154 and 77 in eight years at Montana before taking the Stanford job. But this really isn't a resume critique. It's a quick recap of how Stanford opened up a double-digit lead less than eight minutes in. See, it's a quick recap. Cal in Arizona, which was playing its first game since the death of Bobby Olson, the wife of coach Lute Olson, roses on Bobby's seat in remembrance against California. Arizona leads by one second half. Lauren Woods with the arrow gets called for a foul by Charlie Range. And Woods gets a little too close to range of Charlie, who tees up Woods twice quickly, giving him the gate. Late second half without Woods, Arizona up to Gilbert Arena's shot is blocked, but here's Michael Wright, who was right, tying a career high with 28 points. 11.6 seconds left, Cal down four. Ryan Foran Kelly for three. It's a one-point game. Cal down three final seconds. Brian Weathers for the tie. No good, and Arizona wins 78-75, snapping Cal's seven-game win streak. Luke Walton said it was a real emotional week, but we knew we had to win this game. Wildcats first win in three games under Jim Rosborough, who called Woods' action intolerable, saying that it was an embarrassment for the team. Washington State, number 19, USC, senior guard Jeff Trepagne, first game of the season. The kid's got a 40-inch vertical jump. I guess he needs a 44-inch little rusty later in the first. Freshman Desmond Farmer with the steal. Holla! Don't hate this. Farmer, 7 of 12 shooting, USC up 5. You saw him inside, kid's got mad game outside. Oh, yeah. 22 points, 4 boards, 3 assists, Farmer. Leads USC to an 82-59 win. USC improves to 5-0 and Pac-10 home openers under Henry Bibby. Trojans have also won nine straight home games. Duke, their football team just went 0-11. But on the hard court, Duke flows. An ACC best ever run of 58-6 the last four years. FSU B-ballers over the same stretch never went better than 6-10. Got to give Duke's Jason Williams an Oscar, though. He said, we know it's going to be a battle with a straight face. Coach K's Blue Devils looking for the 20th straight ACC road win. Early first, Shane Battier does his best, Eddie Murphy. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Oh, Lord, help me. My shoe. He goes down his man, Antoine Dixon, yokes up on the three. Knowles actually 7 of 10 from three land. Battier would recover his shoe. Maybe FSU, maybe they should have hit it. Because still first half, Blue Devils killing them kids from deep. Jason Williams draws the D. Battier, three. Shane! 
Batting 22 points, four threes. Then he draws him in. Jason Williams is smooth as the triple Grammy nominated Jill Scott. 26 points, six of 10 from three land. Knowles had to back down before they got smacked down. Duke wins by 27. Fifth straight time they've beaten up FSU by more than 20. Jason Williams, Shane Battier, Nate James combined for 70, including 13 of the team's 15 threes. FSU just one win in its last 18 against the Blue Devils. Indiana's first Bob Knightless Big Ten season in 30 years began in Wisconsin, which trailed in the second half by one until Kirk Kenny's three put him up two. Later, we're tied at 37. Mark Vershaw finds Penny backdoor. 15 total points for Penny. 12 seconds left. India, Indiana down four when Kirk Haston for three. He had 19. Brad Soderbergh's Badgers up just one. Last chance for Indiana trailing by three. Dane Fife has a look. And it doesn't go. Mike Davis. Bummer. Wisconsin wins by three, overcoming a 12-point first-half deficit thanks in part to Penny scoring 13 of his 15 after halftime.